uh, turtle goes its way on the earth and has no dreams of being able to fly, wrote Umberto Eco in one his book. It's only us people who think that we can live forever, being geniuses, all of us, and no longer acknowledging the impossibilities. We do not regard our desires as unstrained, our luxury as un unable, and uh, our dreams as unnecessary patience. Our society is a society today of people who want anything immediately. Humility and the aim of suffering, so the religious words, uh, have disappeared from our vocabulary. Peace, especially for our youngsters, has become a ridiculous word. And we are afraid to utter the word, the word war, even as a member of NATO. We are living our weekends, holidays, wonderful opportunities for spending leisure time. We wake up and fall asleep with the slogan, we can because we want. All manuals are advising us on how to achieve successes. All limits or borders have ceased to exist. We have abolished them. But they exist, especially on the field of culture and religion. My great teacher, sociologist Pichirim Sorokin, a collaborator of Lenin, then uh, uh, after 21, um, a professor on the Prague University and 25 emigrated to America, to United States and uh, being a founder of the, of the uh, th theoretical sociology, the fantastic uh, CV, uh, wrote in a dialogue with his friend at Charles University in Prague in the 30s, Emmanuel Chalupny, that every great culture rather than being only a deposit of various cultural phenomena, constitutes an individual unit, and its various parts are connected under one basic principle. And uh, so this culture is create the unique system of values. And if one of its substantive part changed, Pichirim wrote, the entire culture changes. Did we change European culture in last year? Polish philosopher Leszek Kolakowski continues in these Sorokin's reflections on European culture um, uh, in the 80s. There is no society that would be without the devil, without evil without sin, without conflict. Just some Europeans felt ridiculous uh, idea of superiority of European culture and possibilities to create a paradise forever. And uh, I lived 40 years in such a paradise, in such a social experiment. But uh, we don't have a choice only between total perfection or total self-destruction of our culture. Our destiny is a constant worry and fear that will never end. It is the eternal never ending. This spirit of uncertainty, the powerlessness of achieving harmony as nirvana, it all gives European culture, us Europeans, the right to be ours, this culture. Today we are asking the question again, what is our fundamental value, the value of our European culture? And I understand as a sociologist, the religion as a part of the culture. 
The financial crisis has shaken our conviction that we live in security surrounded by experts who are infinitely uh, enlarging our wealth. We have also regarded the 60 years fight between democracy and totalitarianism, between freedom and despotism as a matter of the past today, quietly resting in the back corner of European cemeteries until Russia's attack at Ukraine's sovereignty, safeguarded by an international treaty signed in Budapest by one of the occupants, has waken up, up from this dolce far niente. Biological analogies predicting an exhaustion and wariness of democracy as a system from Chomsky until Zizek, a uh, democracy which is dying and of which we behind from the Iron Curtain used to dream fruitlessly and with concerns are completely useless according to me. It's too fashionable for us. Many ambitious and egoistic people today in Europe make their career by prophesying the, the extinction of our civilization. They are our modern sibyls. They are spitting out tones of moralistic waste only to add at least a little weight to their terrestrial existence and to bask in the limelight of the media for at least a while. But what is our fundamental value for these days? The fundamental value for us, European of the 21st century, without trying to moralize what is very fashionable today and without modern culture of scaring us through the media, it's also fashionable today, a value which is worth of our protection and our defense. Those two words that we have already forgotten in our open world without any borders. Shall our value be only entertainment? So this carpe diem, it's fashionable here in Rome, yes? Um, entertainment pathologies, lesbia, you are beautiful, or the smile of Jaconda. One thing is for sure, the hedonistic period of the end of the 20th century for which we Slovaks had been waiting and for which has been, had been looking forward so impatiently in all Central Europe is over for God, for good. Not for the wrath of gods, for our faithlessness. Not for us forgetting about memento homo. No, the world has simply changed and so many times, as so many times in the past, and European culture and we Europe Europeans are facing it either or. Our culture is humanistic, stricto sensu. Our value is a human being, a man, a unique being, real man, not man existing as wired. Men as we have become accustomed to, with two faces. One, the divine face, created in God's image. And the other face of Janus. It is us who are the value. Us with the face of genius on one side and disillusion on the other side. We, vulnerable, scared of seeing our reflections in the mirror, alienated and confronted by different versions of reality and virtuality. How to know which is gen genuine and which is false? And in the same time, recklessly creating our different identities in internet. We are partly lost between facts and fables. And so up to now, we had been wallowing in the feeling of exclusivity, 
but the loneliness and injustice committed by, on us by these others coming to us or living with us. These others, these others among us. We have lost the habit of rural hatred from the past, of course. We have declared it as a non-European, this rural hatred from the past. But really, this is my question, really? Some, some explaining about the my country, Slovakia, which is not very known here, I think. Slovakia is Europe with common European problems, but at the same time, we are dealing with the problems that are already behind you in the Western society. The current political populism divides our society into two groups of people, an honest, rural, religious man and a corrupt, unworthy uh, elites. The division against which my loved Emmanuel Kant fundamentally spoke, buried in the very destroyed Kaliningrad, former K Königsberg. I, I was there some, some months ago. He spoke of his belief in urgent equality of human beings as a wise and single subject. Exactly in, as in your country, we see in Slovakia efforts to weaken representative democracy because this is for elites in the name of this division. Uh, and the democracy has still only shallow roots in Slovakia. The blame of this increasingly popular notion is being put on the commercialized media ideologically vague policies of tra traditional political parties, and the citizens wish to break all the taboos. Taboos coming from social stratification and taboos from the religion. Taboos that society was scared by in the past. Our past includes a long period in Slovakia a lack of sovereignty, and two totalitarian regimes without religion that lasted much too long, two generations, but at the same time, this time, this 60 years, and the especially 40 years of communist regime in Slovakia, provided you, Western countries, with a relatively long peaceful period without any big problems. And so we have learned to regard politics and the public life incorrectly, all the time as a fight between good and evil. evil. As in our fairy tales. For example, we hated Habsburgs. Why? Because Slovakia was in 16th century, eight more than 80% Protestant. But we hated the Habsburgs who re us amidst bloodshed. Then we hated Hungarians who wanted to denationalize us in 19th century. And most of us silently supported the fascist because they, they gave us our own state. But also because they let us robber rob Jewish properties. Initially, we supported the communists at the very beginning, who let us receive money for non-working performance. And later we hated them because they separated us from the luxury of the Western world, as Mr. Busek uh, spoken about. Anti-Americanism as an anti-liberalism, which was massively infused into us by communist journalists for two generations is deeply rooted. And in today's Slovakia, we can see the gradual emergence of hatred and contempt of the EU as a force too weak to straighten things out. Religion became, in these 60 years, 
folk culture, folklore. And throughout this time, we are looking for an excuse for all of this so that we are not held responsible. We are not responsible for ourselves and for what we have produced in our country. That we can pretend to be the only a victim. This is a very fashionable in all Central Europe. We are victim of you. We are victim of these others. And after a decade being a European, in, in European presence, we slowly but starting uh, feel to have a right to hate Romas. Because they survived in Slovakia. There were no concentration camps for Romas. So they survived in Slovakia, and now we are starting to hate them. Human conflict had always pyrophoric and a self-catalytic mechanism inside, which turned mere dissatisfaction into deadly enmity. Spirit of understanding, understanding others without the dirty tricks and conformism, the ability to overcome hostility in ourselves and in others without moving beyond the borders of what we consider our values, this is really an art. This is the European culture, culture that we developed and which is not a natural behavior of human beings, really not. Lions, in reality, eat sharks. And also our ability, even today, constantly train and training ourselves in this art, persist in our culture, on which is fate of the democratic system in the world dependent on. Huntington has confronted us with his claim that the disappointment with democracy, failing to resolve all of our problems, is inevitable and will pass. Only to be, we have to be patient. Uh, and some, if, if, if it's allowed for me, some few words about what is happening now in our part of the world. Ukraine is European and is having hard time today. And not only Ukrainians, but also we Europeans are making exams. What is true and what is really our belief. What we, what we have buried under our swimming pools and what of our values we hold really true. I'm not going to talk about the weakened uh, Ukraine currency, about the gas supply, about their debts, our blood, and sweet uh, that is waiting for Ukraine citizens. We shall talk about the system that Russia Federation exported to us, together with oil, gas, and millions of dollars stored in our European banks. And we want to have these dollars. Doesn't matter if they are dirty and stolen. They exported also pathologically system, pathological system under the standard, under the slogan, everything is allowed. You just have to know how to do it. After the financial crisis, we are facing the crisis, another crisis, the crisis of trust. And not all, only the trust of contracts. If Budapest International Treaty guaranteeing the independence of Ukraine is not valid any longer, which treaty actually is valid? Written and non-written treaties. The opaque building of international law and international customs 
The security we, leave, we believe in collapsed like a house of cards. And from Moscow, they see it funny. It's similarly funny for them if bad children pull down your Lego tower, you have bed for more than a half of the day. So, are we going to make happy street speakers today also here in Rome, who have popular slogans? Why the democratic system? Why the parliamentary democracy? I'm following people's will. Or can we hope that worshippers of direct democracy learn a lesson now from Crimea referendum? And their lesson was life. The contracts always required two gentlemen uh, or two gentlemen countries, says the adage. Even after efforts of pushing button reset by US and pathetic hacks by Europeans, on the other side, there is still old Stalinist KGB who is really not a gentleman. Do we understand it already? Really? Or are we so naive? And naivety of adults, let's say it straight away, is stupid, incredible folly. But as always in European history, we have a chance. There are always a few Europeans, few our values, few some values from our religions and from our political systems whose shoulders we can all stand on. Stood on them in the past and also today, we don't need to search for old naive recipes on purifying fire of alchemists. We are starting again a difficult, uncertain journey of searching for indicative signs that will let us on the hard but well-known path we all know from the history. European path that is about to prepare us to fight, yes, to fight, to protect and to defend our values, uh, our culture, without rural primitive hatred. So, this was my speech, dear friends. The world has changed, and nothing will ever be as it was before. Thank you very much. <laughs>